Hello friends, a very warm welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to analyze an auto ancillary company which is slowly marching towards the EV sector. It is developing new innovative products in the EV category which we will discuss in the coming slides. So if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get updates of all the new videos which I upload. Don't forget to join our telegram channel where we discuss daily market news, views and lots of interesting stuff. So let's get started. So before we begin today's video, we will discuss a few terms which will be frequently used in today's presentation. First term, the first term is powertrain. So powertrain is an assembly of every component that pushes your vehicle forward. The key components of a powertrain include engine, transmission, drive shaft, axles and differential. So in simple words, powertrain is a set of all the components starting from the engine till the wheels which helps us to move the vehicle forward. Then the second term is drivetrain. So what is drivetrain and how is it different from powertrain? When we remove engine from the powertrain, the remaining parts except the engines and the wheels, the remaining parts connecting the engine and the wheels are called the drivetrain. Another term which we will be using in the video is retrofitting. Now retrofitting is by taking an existing IC vehicle which is internal combustion vehicle which runs by fuels like diesel and petrol and replacing the powertrain of that vehicle and converting it into an electric vehicle. So this is a better solution than completely selling your old vehicle and buying a new electric one. This is one of the key businesses which this company is targeting high growth. Let's begin with the industry analysis. The Indian auto ancillary industry contributes about 2-3% to of India's GDP. The auto ancillary segment is expected to grow faster than the auto sector itself and it is anticipated the global auto ancillaries market is expected to reach about 2.3 million by 2027. And the scamshaft market which this company specifically manufactures is expected to get an incremental growth of about 14 million units by 2024 from the current capacities. From 2020 to 24, the global automotive camshafts market is expected to grow at about 2% which is not very impressive and the Indian government has announced a PLI of about 57,000 crores for the auto component sector. With the scrappage policy coming in, there will be tailwinds for this industry as well. Specifically talking about the EV segment, the EV se segment in India is expected to be worth of about 206 billion dollars by 2030 and the EV sales across all the segments will be somewhere around 100 million units by 2030. As per Niti Aayog, around 70% of the commercial vehicles on the road will be electric, around 30% of the passenger vehicles would be electric, around 40% of the buses can be electric and around 80% of the two wheelers will be electric by 2030. This is an estimation. And totally to achieve these targets, cumulatively an investment of about 180 billion will be required to spend in the EV uh, segment including the EV charging infrastructure. So this is the scope of opportunity which this company or the other EV segment companies are targeting for the next 8 to 10 years. Now talking about this company specifically, they are into camshafts manufacturing for the last 25 years. So they are the market leaders in India as well as globally and they have a market share of about 30% in India and around 9% globally in camshaft manufacturing. So they manufacture all kinds of camshaft with under one roof which is very rare for any company in this segment. They have long standing relations with all the OEMs or most of the big OEMs in the world and they have recently developed a retrofitted electric bus which is a very interesting product which we will discuss in the coming slides. By using this retrofitted technology they are targeting the commercial vehicle segment in India to begin with and they are trying to indigenize or manufacture locally the retrofitted electrical buses and lightweight trucks for the Indian commercial customers. The company has three subsidiaries which is EMOS, MFT and MEMCO which shows that the company is doing key acquisitions and they have a total capacity to manufacture around 11 million units of camshafts in a year. They have more than 150 SKUs in camshafts. They are located in four locations across the world. They have 12 plus products and they sell to more than 30 plus OEMs and the company has more than 2500 employees. Now let's talk about the management. The chairman and managing director of the company is Mr. Yatin Shah. He has been leading the company since the last couple of decades and he has more than 29 years of experience in auto ancillary industry. He is having a vision of taking the company very soon to a 1000 crore revenue mark. He has done BCom from uh, Bombay University and MBA from Pune University and he has won several awards to his candidature. Now let's talk about the milestones the company has achieved in this history. The company was incorporated in 1992 as Precision Carbs Limited. In 1997, they got a PE investment from a PE firm called CDC. In 1999, they did a joint venture with a UK based company and in 2006, they acquired 51% of the stake in the joint venture which they did. 
In 2006 itself, the CDC's uh, PE investment stake was uh, taken by Tata Capital in the company, which shows the reputation of the company as the Tata Group was one of the investors earlier. In 2012, they incorporated a company in China called PCL Shanghai Company and they also did a JV in 2013 with a Chinese company. In 2014, they did a partnership with EMAG and in 2016, they got the IPO listed on BSC and NSE. In 2017, they acquired a company called Memco. And 2018, they started acquiring companies called MFT and EMOS. We'll talk about the subsidiary companies in the coming slides. 2019, they acquired the balance 5% stake and Memco became a wholly owned subsidiary of the company. In 2019, they disinvested from the Chinese joint ventures, which they had earlier. In 2020, they acquired the 100% stake in the other two companies, which was MFT and EMOS. Now, all the three companies have become fully owned subsidiaries of this company. So, this is a brief journey of the company. We'll discuss about everything in detail going further. As an organization structure, if you see Precision Camshaft Solapur is the holding company. Under that, we have two subsidiaries, which is PCL Netherlands and Memco. And under PCS Netherlands, there are two more subsidiaries, which is MFT and EMOS. Now, what does Precision Camshaft manufacture? They manufacture camshafts, which are chilled cast iron camshaft, ductile iron camshafts. So, like this, there are several varieties of camshafts which they manufacture under one roof. These are auto components fitted in different vehicles for the functioning, smooth functioning of the vehicles. By manufacturing this, they have uh, major uh, long-term relationships with all the major OEMs across the world. You can see the brands like Ford, Toyota, BMW, Fiat, Tata. So to all these companies, they supply the spare parts which they manufacture. In Memco, the company was established in 1983 and they are one of the key vendors to Bosch. They manufacture fuel injector components and stainless steel components. So there are a couple of other major customers which Memco has other than Bosch. The next subsidiary is MFT. The MFT subsidiary is based in Germany and they manufacture niche auto components like balancer shafts, camshafts and prismatic components. And MFT also has major OEMs as their customers like BMW, Bosch, Audi, Suzuki and several other well-known names. EMOS, which is again their uh, newest or very interesting or high growth business, is a Netherlands based company. This is morely, mainly a tech driven company. They provide end to end solutions for uh, electric retrofitting. They also manufacture drive lines. Now you are able to differentiate the meaning between the powertrain and the drive lines. And using these drive lines or powertrains, they are able to convert the buses and trucks into electric vehicles. In terms of capacity and range, their vehicles uh, are mainly targeting three ranges, which is about uh, 4.2 tons of weight, 7.5 to 27 tons of weight, and about 50 maximum tons of weight. And the range is between 150 to 300 kilometers in different kinds of vehicles. Talking specifically about EMOS in detail, as this is the main crux of the presentation and the company and as shareholders also, we are focusing more uh, uh, on this uh, segment of the company. We are expecting higher growth in this segment compared to others and that could be the only reason why one should be interested in investing in this company. So EMOS has uh, uh, more than a decade of experience in this retrofitting business. So retrofitting is taking up of a normal IC combustion vehicle and changing the powertrain and the drive line to convert it into an electric vehicle. So they have more than a decade's experience in this segment. They have approvals in all the major countries to do this work and they have already done it for about 600 vehicles and they are running smoothly. They have already run more than 100 million kilometers, uh, 100 million miles uh, until now. They have also developed an uh, electric drive line for a fully automated self-driven truck. They have developed a new battery pack for aviation and defense and they have developed an electric drive line for the world's first fully electric fire engine also. Because the main vehicle, whether it is truck, uh, bus or uh, fire engine, the, there are a lot of similarities in all these uh, vehicles. So by reading this, you understand that EMOS is a very tech driven business. So if we dig down deeper into the business or the industry in which EMOS operates, retrofitting instead of changing the entire vehicle, there is a chance that you replace your engine and the other components and convert. So this could be a very good business opportunity. They, they are able to convert the diesel trucks and give them into a ready to use electric vehicle in just under 90 days. And they are also manufacturing ready to use modular kits which are drive lines which can be used by OEMs. So what happens is a company is already manufacturer of electric vehicles. Manufacturer in the sense they are mainly assembling electric vehicles, any of the popular brand. They will give an order to EMOS to prepare a driveline, electric driveline and give them. So they will use that and assemble along with the other parts and 
manufacture electric vehicles so in that way emos can get bulk orders so in terms of uh, services emos does complete end to end when any oem approaches them for any requirement right from design till the service stage the entire thing can be developed and given by emos itself what are the benefits of retrofitting it will reduce the carbon emission as the vehicle will become the ev vehicle it will reduce the cost of running the vehicle and as the government also wants to reduce the dependency on oil and imports the electric vehicles or the retrofitting business will gain a lot of traction so this is one of the newest product which this company has developed in india they have retrofitted and made a electric bus which is running smoothly in the roads of uh, on the roads of maharashtra they have presented their first electric retrofitted bus to the public roads in india localized more than 60% of the products so around 60% of these products are made in india and slowly 100% will be made in india this was designed in the netherlands emos company whereas the manufacturing and the retrofitting was done in india so the company believes that this is a significant milestone in the company's journey and if this uh, business is well appreciated by the government and the other private sectors the company will get a lot of business from this segment so these are the various global customers which emos has presently in terms of segmental contribution of revenue the casting cam camshafts generate about 36% and machined about 64% of the revenue in terms of the subsidiary wise uh, revenue if you see in the q3 fy22 if we compare 145 crores is coming from uh, the main company which is precision camshaft memco generates about 13 crores mft about 38 crores and 48 crores from emos so the emos revenue share is growing faster in the company than the other subsidiaries in terms of EBITDA, PCL contributes about 32 crores, MMCO about 3 crores, MFT is a loss making company still and EMOS contributes about 3.79 crores of EBITDA. In terms of uh, geography, they generate about 42% revenue from exports and about 57% from the domestic sector. Now let's talk about the competitors of this company. There are no identical competitors when it comes to EMOS in India, but let us compare it with other auto ancillary companies in India like Craftsman Automation, g and Axle, JBM Auto, Sundaram Clayton and Jamna Auto. The market cap is somewhere around 1380 crores, whereas uh, Craftsman is about 5000, GNA is about 1100, JBM is 6000 and Sundaram Clayton is about 7000, whereas Jamna Auto is about 4200. In terms of revenue, the precision camshafts does about 885 crores of revenue annually presently, which is much lesser than the companies of the similar size. EBITDA margin is about 11%, ROC is about 0 0.40 because uh, this year, the trading 12 months has not been that great for the company. The market cap to sales is about 1.56 and PE is about 105 because the results are not that great. In terms of market cap to sales, if we compare with the other uh, companies in the same sector, it looks reasonable, but performance of the company has not been that impressive and consistent. So if the performance improves, then the present valuation is justifiable. Otherwise, the market cap to sales of 1.5 also may appear to be expensive at as other companies like you see GNA Axles and Sundaram Clayton, these are available at much cheaper valuations than Precision Camshaft. So the main focus in the company will be towards the EMOS business. If that EMOS business takes off, then the entire valuations will be justified and discounted. What are the competitive strengths of this company or economic mode? The company has market leadership in the Camshaft business and in EMOS also it's going pretty well. They have uh, complete electric drive lines and the power solutions for all the heavy ME equipment vehicles, which are the light commercial vehicles. They manufacture all four types of camshafts, which is cast iron, duct iron, hybrid and assembled, which is rare to find in any other uh, auto components manufacturer in the world. They have long relationships with their OEMs, which are not going to change so easily. They have global presence. They supply to all the major countries across the world. The camshaft manufacturing specifically has competitive advantage as it is not some product which is very easy to manufacture. They are uh, venturing into electric uh, vehicles business which is a very high growth growing industry. The management is well experienced with an experience of about two to three decades. The son of Mr. Shah has also joined the business and actively running the business. The company has a very fast product delivery cycle where they can take the requirement and de deliver to the customers in a short span of uh, just a couple of months. They can keep the manufacturing cost low in India compared to the other countries and in terms of the manufacturing facilities they have state of the art facilities and the quality of the products which they manufacture is high quality and consistent and that is why the OEMs are having long relationships with the company. Let's talk about the management highlights in the recent uh, con call which we did. They have uh, started my work on a 15 megawatt captive solar plant. The uh, industry as such if you observe they are facing with supply side challenges with the semiconductor issue as well as the logistics and other issues. In terms of margins, the company is doing decent margins, although compared to the past, the margins have reduced, but they expect them to 
bounce back in the coming years and in terms of business they are getting decent uh, demand from their customers talking about specifically the subsidiaries memco nashik is uh, witnessing decent demand whereas the german company which is mft is facing some covid uh, disruptions and the german company is also working towards adding other auto ancillary products which are other than the camshafts in terms of customer concentration no single customer contributes to more than 23% of the revenue but up to 23% is also very high for any company emos is continuously working on newer technologies and developing newer products in terms of retrofitting the business is a traditional retrofitting business that is taking the old vehicle and changing and giving it and also they are supplying ready to use uh, drive line kits for uh, oem so in both the ways they can get a lot of business the recent bus which is started uh, retrofitted bus in maharashtra they are getting positive replies from customers in the europe market they are getting a lot of demand for the retrofitting business so they are concentrating more on europe presently for this business they are in touch with lot of uh, customers from various industries like logistics and uh, other industries for retrofitting their present electrical uh, trucks and buses and the presently the company is working on dry, developing an electric drive line for a 4 ton light commercial vehicle in india in terms of growth they are also working on 6 to 8 new camshafts products in india the company is slowly moving towards uh, diversifying their business from just only camshafts to the other products and it aims that by 2025 around 2025% of the business will come from a non camshaft business the retrofitting business as we have discussed has a lot of potential for growth and that's why emos as a subsidiary is expected to grow faster than the other com companies under this uh, group's umbrella for the next 2 to 2 and a half years emos uh, demand is fully utilized or their capacities are fully utilized or booked and the other uh, subsidiaries which are mfts and memco are expected to grow more than 10% for the next 2 to 3 years in india there are more than 20 lakh light commercial vehicles registered so if people like the product and they start converting into a retrofitted electric vehicle then the market size is huge recently the company presented its electrical uh, retrofitted products to the government of maharashtra and they also signed up an mou with the solapur government to supply them a couple of vehicles uh, free of cost on returnable basis and if these uh, acts go successful then there could be expected huge demand from the government side also in terms of uh, revenue contribution the major contribution is coming towards machine camshafts nowadays so it's a higher margin business compared to the casting camshafts which is good for the company from margins perspective what are the risks in this business the auto ancillary industry is a cyclical industry so that is a major risk to the industry that the, to maintain uh, consistent revenue the chip shortage presently is not uh, there is no visibility that the shortage will get resolved for the next one year at least the et electric retrofitting business or this industry is still it at a nascent stage in india so till it gets widely accepted the demand may be low there could be competition arising from other global players or the auto ancillary players in india as well the auto components industry sales is dependent in the auto sector so if the main oems business do well then these uh, companies also get good sales the commodity prices are creating a lot of pressure on the margins of these companies and they have to keep their technology updated otherwise if it becomes obsolete they will stop receiving orders from their oems customer concentration is a very big risk in the industry if they lose any uh, customer then it could dent the demand or the revenue in a very bad manner and in terms of capacity utilization the company is not running on a full capacity they are running about just about 60 to 70% of their capacity which shows that the demand for the existing products which is camshaft is not at their peak utilization now after talking about the business analysis in detail let's talk about the numbers starting with the quarterly results of q3 fy22 the revenue was about 244 crores compared to 209 crores earlier EBITDA was 37 crores compared to 29 crores profit after tax was 12 crores compared to 11 crores EBITDA margins have improved from 14 to 15% and profit after tax margins remain somewhere around 5% so the results on a yearly basis have been better in Q3 FY22 in terms of revenue if you see in 2018 the company did a revenue of about 421 crores compared to 885 crores in the trailing 12 months so in terms of CAGR the growth comes to about 20% in the last few years In terms of top line, the growth is decent. EBITDA is again uh, range bound. There is no consistent growth at the EBITDA level. They did about 125 crores of uh, EBITDA in 2019, which came down to about 98 crores in the trailing 12 months. In fact, in FY21, it came down to as low as 61 crores. So there has not been any consistent growth in the EBITDA. In terms of EBITDA margins, again, it's negative, as the EBITDA margins have gone down from 19% to around 11% in trailing 12 months, which is not a good sign for any company. The profit after tax has also reduced from about 46 crores in 2018, where the revenue was lower 
to about 24 crores in the trailing 12 months. Profit after tax margins have also reduced as we see in the EBITDA margins. It has come down to just about 2.7% in the trailing 12 months. Coming to the balance sheet items, the equity has been consistent at 95 crores. The reserves have steadily gone up as it's a consistently profit making company and as on September 21, they have about 566 crores of reserves on the balance sheet. Borrowings are under control that debt equity ratio is just 0.21 and they have about 140 crores uh, of debt on the balance sheet. Trade payables are uh, under control. There is no abnormal movement in trade payables. Fixed assets are consistently maintained. They are not doing much of capex as the existing capacities itself are not fully utilized. Inventory is under control. There is no uh, abnormal movement in the inventory levels. Trade re receivables are also doing fine. They are not having any abnormal movements in the trade receivables or there is no sudden spike. Data days are somewhere around 80 days, which is uh, pretty decent. It's just above uh, two months. ROC again like profit margins ROC is on a declining trend as the profit of margins are falling the return on uh, capital employed and ROE is also falling for the company which is not a good sign. Cash equivalents are uh, somewhere around 77 crores on the balance sheet and operating cash flow has always been positive which is good and they have generated about 120 crores of operating cash flow in FI21. Free cash flow sometimes is going negative which is not good as the company is not doing much of capex. In FY21 they generated a free cash flow of about 89 crores. ROE is again very low. Dividend yield is 0.68 so it's a dividend paying company. The remuneration to executive directors is about 6.73 crores which, uh, which is well within the company's act limit. Looking at the performance of the company it may appear to be on the higher side. The auditors are MSKA and associates and in terms of related party transaction we don't see any risks major risk in this uh, company coming to the shareholding pattern the promoters hold about 65.37 percent stake which is pretty decent and the public holds about 35 percent there is not much institutional uh, holding in this company so it is insignificant and there is no pledge in terms of valuation last rate price was somewhere around 150 rupees 52 week high in low is about 40 to 190 one year last one year the stock has given 200 percent return which is very good Last three years, it has given about 36% CAGR, which is also uh, a very good performance. But in the last five years, if you see the returns are nil. This is because this is a cyclical industry. If you just apply a buy and hold strategy to this industry or the to this particular stock in particular, then if the performance goes down in the future, you will lose all the returns you have made in the stock. The last five years median P is somewhere around 15. Market cap is somewhere around 1300 crores. Face value is a 10 share still and EPS is about 2.4. This makes the PE 105 which is very expensive and the peers are trading somewhere in the middle of about 15 to 30 PE. The book value is somewhere around 70 rupees which makes the PB ratio 2 times and the market cap to sales is 1.5 times. So the valuations are not that expensive but the performance which is inconsistent is making these valuations appear very expensive. So if the performance improve and the consistency is maintained in terms of performance then at market cap to sales of 1.5 times it's not a very expensive stock. If you look at the charts after a continuous period of downtrend for several years the stock has taken off post covid and now it is consolidating sideways after making a high. So if you are fully convinced that the new business of the company which is the EMOS business is going to generate consistent revenues but you will be convinced about this only if the company reports good numbers and gives a very confident outlook of it for the next two to four quarters and then only we can be very sure. In such scenarios only we can accumulate the stock at the higher end. EMOS division doesn't perform well then the stock may again get into a downturn like earlier and come back to that earlier levels of 50 odd. So you have to be very careful while uh, accumulating the stock and keep a close watch on the performance of the EMOS segment in this business. So this is about precision camshafts. I hope you have liked my introduction about a new company into a new kind of uh, electric product to you. So in, to summarize the management is well experienced. The market size of the business in this uh, industry is huge. They are venturing into the EV segment which is a sunrise sector which will generate a lot of tailwinds for this company. It's a tech driven company especially the EMOS sector if you the segment if you see. They are continuously developing new products. The company has been doing key acquisitions geographically and also in terms of products which is very wise from the management's perspective. If you want to invest in this company you have to take a long term perspective as the electric business will take time to show its performance. If you expect returns in the next couple of quarters or in terms of performance it may not be visible so soon in the near future. But this space we can't rule out that there cannot be a competition. There could be severe competition going further as other companies are also targeting the electric vehicle segment aggressively. In terms of investment this company our main interest is in the EMOS segment. So dependency on that segment also is to be 
kept in mind while you invest in this company. Capacity utilization is not 100%, which shows that the demand is not at its peak and the industry is witnessing a slowdown. Fundamentally also, the company's financials are not that attractive. They are kind of average kind of performance. The growth has been inconsistent in the history and so we cannot be fully sure that the growth will become consistent from here onwards. In terms of valuation, generally such companies are suggestible to be accumulated at lower levels instead of buying at their peak because we are not sure about the company's performance and not also sure about the new products which the company is introducing, whether they will be successful in the Indian market. So this is about precision camshafts. I hope you like the detailed analysis. If you like it, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to comment below your favorite company's names. I will choose one of those companies for my upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.